o'clock on Tuesday, April the 7th. Time for our Crossroad Connection for today. Uh, last week I shared with you a hymn story behind the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And that was one of the songs that we used in our worship time online that week. And so a couple of days ago, we used the hymn, How Great Thou Art. And I want to share with you a little bit related to that song as well. Again, I'm reading the hymn story from the book called Then Sings My Soul. In Isaiah 45, 18, we find these words. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Carl Boberg, a 26-year-old Swedish minister, wrote a poem in 1885, which he called O Stor Gud, translated meaning O Mighty God. The words literally translated to English said this, When I the world consider, which thou hast made by thine almighty word, and how the web of life thou wisdom guideth, and all creation feedeth at thy board, then doth my soul burst forth in song of praise, O great God, O great God. His poem was published and forgotten, or so he thought. Several years later, Carl was surprised to hear it being sung to the tune of an old Swedish melody, but the poem and hymn did not achieve widespread fame. Hearing this hymn in Russia, English missionary Stuart Hine was so moved, he modified and expanded the words and made his own arrangement of the Swedish melody. He later said his first three verses were inspired line upon line by Russia's rugged Carpathian mountains. The first verse was composed when he was caught in a thunderstorm in a Carpathian village. The second as he heard the birds sing near the Romanian border. And the third as he witnessed many of the Carpathian mountain dwellers coming to Christ. The final verse was written after Dr. Hine returned to Great Britain. Sometime later, Dr. J. Edwin Orr heard How Great Thou Art being sung by Naga tribes people in Assam in India and decided to bring it back to America for use in his own meetings. When he introduced it at a conference in California, it came to the attention of music publisher Tim Spencer, who contacted Mr. Hine and had the song copyrighted. It was published and recorded. During the 1954 Billy Graham crusade in Harangay Arena, George Beverly Shea was given a leaflet containing this hymn. He sang it to himself and shared it with other members of the Graham team. Though not used in London, it was introduced the following year to audiences in Toronto. In the New York crusade of 1957, it was sung by Bev Shea 99 times, with the choir joining the majestic refrain, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. As we are here in Holy Week, and we are anticipating the excitement of Easter and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ once again, I want to point out the third stanza of this hymn. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. It's important for us to remember 
this week that God did, in fact, send his one and only son to live among us and to face greater challenges than even we face today with what we're going through right now. He had the most terrible week uh, that anyone could ever experience, and yet he did it with love. He did it completely willingly because he loves us so much. And he was willing to give of himself, to give his life, Jesus did, that we might have the opportunity for eternal life. And so, as we continue through this week and as we look forward to Sunday and to celebrating the resurrection again, let us not forget what Jesus Christ went through on our behalf. It's an awesome thought to think about all that he bore for us. And this hymn reminds us of those very truths. I hope uh, as you're going through this week, you'll be thinking about that and perhaps diving into the scriptures and reading uh, the Easter story, reading about Holy Week and all that Christ went through in that week and getting ready to celebrate the resurrection this coming Sunday. We are certainly looking forward to having, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, have time of worship together this weekend as we have been doing uh, albeit not physically together, but still together in spirit. Also, uh, I want to remind you that tomorrow being Wednesday, we will have uh, an online Bible study. We're going through the book of First Thessalonians. That will be at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Also, this evening at 630, we will have a Zoom prayer meeting regarding the upcoming Ignite Randolph revival. So um, there'll be a link out there that you can find and jump onto that Zoom prayer meeting tonight at 6.30. So I encourage you to do that. Then tomorrow at three o'clock, the online Bible study. And then at four o'clock, the youth hangout on Zoom with Pastor Justin. So all of our students, I encourage you to get on there and be a part of that. It's good to see people's faces and be able to hear from them in that form uh, on Zoom. And just to encourage you, Zoom is so easy to use that my uh, mother, who's almost 73 years old, was able to teach her Sunday school lesson this past Sunday on Zoom. And I can tell you for sure, if she can use it, anybody can. So I hope you have a blessed day. We love you. Call us if you need anything. See you later.